In order to make biological molecules economically and process feasible, improvements were needed to historical cell culture production methods. Biomass and titer levels had to increase significantly, but new methods of control were also needed. Methods such as genetic modification of organisms capable of producing more and high quality drug substance, improved controls of cell culture feedstocks and metabolite byproducts, and finally, a combination of methods which increased total cell density, or TCD, or total biomasses, as well as high viable cell densities, or VCD. Downstream operations were not historically given focus as capacity and efficiency was still historically appropriate. As we can observe around us today, historical investment in upstream cell line development, metabolite feed controls, biomass improvements, and product output per biomass have collectively made large molecule bioprocesses economically and eng engineering feasible. The consequence of such modernization and upstream improvement has now placed new burdens and bottlenecks on most legacy downstream operations. Even while performing the perfect downstream unit operation, there will have inherent compounding and yield loss and process inefficiencies which are significant. Even with 95% yield at each unit operation, there is a fundamental loss due to things like line dead volumes, centrifugation losses and tie up on filters, chromatography impurities, fraction cuts and separations, agglomeration, aggregation and stability issues, sampling methods and measurement induced errors. And bottlenecks are prevalent in every unit operation. Many of the common bottlenecks include areas around harvest, high cell masses and debris, and the variable particle conditions at the end, buffer usage or excessive consumption concerns, point of use preparation, storage and stability, and floor space occupancy, simultaneous excipient tracking and verification. In many cases, it's actually common to lose sight of many process conditions with multiple excipients water usage, high consumption of distilled water or WIFI, and other infrastructure limitations and burdens, issues around wide tolerances of drug substance concentration, commonly or typically seen around plus or minus 5% in many cases, undesirable or unexplained process variability, such as on different days, different results, or conditions where we just don't simply have the means to correlate process events, unacceptably high batch failure rates, or root cause investigations which are not supported by methods situated to in situ processes, batch comparison and other data capture and data structuring methods as well. The upstream improvements and new challenges imposed on downstream bioprocessing have put new focus on downstream improvements and investments. To address drivers such as process quality and consistency, resource management and cost and yield improvements, PAT needs to provide several things, including dynamic range improvements, precision and accuracy improvements, reducing the number of sampling errors, sample handling and results delay, process intensification, including integration, connected, continuous and modular PAT, which can also help support reduced cycle times and material handling. Also providing in situ particle system characterization and tracking, providing advanced buffer management and reducing unnecessary consumption of buffers, as well as aiding in point of use creation. Component and excipient identification and tracking as well. And finally, documentation standardization, peripheral processes communication, data capture, and even structured data.